In this final video for chapter uh, 15, what we're going to look at is we're going to look at an exact uh, calculation that you would have done in chapter 4. The only thing we're going to add to that exact calculation you would have done in chapter 4 is this last little piece where instead of giving me the concentration of a, a product um, from a titration, you're going to give me the pH. That's all that's different. So in theory, you could have answered this question up until getting the concentration of the H3O plus um, from the previous, from all the stuff we did in the past. So um, I want to kind of point that out because a lot of students look at this problem and they go, wait a minute, I don't remember how to do this. But really you do because this is just a recap from titrations in chapter four. So if you don't remember, go back to the titrations video of chapter four and take a look and see and make sure that you understand how to do these. So what's happening here is we're taking 50 mils of a solution of barium hydroxide and uh, we're reacting it with 50 mils of a solution of HCl. And so these two things are going to react with each other and it turns out that this is an example of a limiting reagent problem. We have two different reactants. Um, we have a solution and a concentration for barium hydroxide and we have a solution and a concentration for HCl. So we have two different... Um, we have two different solutions, we're combining them together, and we got to figure out what's left over after this is all said and done. Is there an excess of OH minus, or is there an excess of H3O plus from the acid? So we know that in a titration, what we basically have happening is, is we have H3O plus plus OH minus gives H3, H2O. This is our net ionic equation, and it gives two H2O. So our net ionic equation for any strong acid, strong base titration is, a, is this. And we remember this from chapter 4. H3O plus plus OH minus gives H2O. So what our job now is, is to figure out, well, how much H3O plus do we have around? How much OH minus do we have around? And then from those two things, we can figure out which one's going to be an excess. So let's go about doing that. Let's figure out how much H3O plus is in the solution and how much OH minus is in the solution. So for the H3O plus, we have 0 0.050 liters uh, that's a 50 mil solution and you're going to see me start to do this with the concentrations um, i'm going to automatically convert them to liters now the way that i did that i'm just going to show this once is i divided it by 1000 um uh, this is mils i divided it by 1000 mils for every one liter which gives me 0 0.050 liters so I'm, I'm just pointing that out so i get 0 0.050 liters of hcl times uh, 0 0.25 moles of HCl for every one liter. And for every one mole of HCl, I get one mole of H3O+. And remember, that is because HCl fully ionizes in water to make 100% H3O+, as a product. Um, if you go back and take a look at the last video, we explained that. And so what we get from this is we get that there is um, 0 0.0 one two five moles of h3o plus and for the oh minus we have 0 0.0500 liters of barium hydroxide times its concentration which is the same however for every one mole of barium hydroxide we have to be a little careful here there are two moles of oh minus so we're going to get some extra OH minus relative to the to the HCl. So you're going to it's going to look like even though they have the same volumes and same concentrations, we're going to get more um, of the OH minus because of the fact that there is two OH minuses in there. So we're going to get 0 0.0250 moles of OH minus. And so at this point, you can see that our limiting reagent is going to be H3O plus. Uh, this one is going to be our LR, so it's going to be totally consumed. So if you want to look, if you want to do like a little bit of a table to see that, what we have here is we have 0 0.0125 moles of the HCl, and we have 0 0.0250 moles of the OH minus. And so because we have more OH minus than we have H3O plus, the H3O plus is going to get fully consumed and go away to zero. And that makes sense because we know that our limiting reagent goes to zero. And so if we want to calculate our excess reagent, 
we can subtract away the number of moles, and you have to, there's a one-to-one -one stoichiometry here, so we can do this directly. So we can subtract away 0.02, uh, we can subtract away the number of moles of H3O plus from the number of moles of OH minus, and we get 0 0.10125 moles of OH minus left over. Now, if you want to set this up as a full-blown limiting reagent problem, where you, you know, and follow the procedure for ex an excess reagent, you can do that, and you will come up with this answer, and that's fine. This is just a faster way to get there, uh, and a more efficient way to get there, and we're going to see how to do this when we do, um, when we do buffer problems. So our excess is 0 0.125 moles of OH-, and now we've got to get a concentration. So if we want to get a concentration of OH-, we have our number of moles, 0 0.0125 moles, but we need to know what our total volume is. And our total volume is going to be the 50 mils plus the 50 mils. So once this thing is all said and done, this is going to be in 100 mils of solution. So we're going to get a concentration of OH- minus equal to um, 0.125 molar. And once we have the concentration of OH minus, now the problem just becomes a uh, now the problem just becomes working this out to get the pH, right? So if we want to get the pH, we can convert this to a pOH by taking the negative log, and we get 0 0.903. And then if we say that the pH is 14 minus 0 0.903, we get a pH equal to 13.097 or 13.10. And so that's our final answer for this one. So all of this up until here is just a standard titration problem limiting reagent. And then this little bit right here where we, this little bit right here where we convert the concentration of OH minus to a pH, that's all that's new. Now the reason why I'm showing you this is because you will see titrations on this upcoming exam. Um, and you will see titrations of strong acids and strong bases, which is this. And then in the next chapter, you're gonna see titrations of weak acids uh, with strong bases or vice versa.